Hello and welcome to Procontation Points Video Snark. I read bad books so that you don't have to. I'm continuing my read through of A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. Not the first video, go check out the others. Links are posted below. Chapter 13. For some unholy reason, the chapter opens with describing the taxi driver for the cab they took to the club. He was creepy and wouldn't stop staring at them. I don't know why the author felt the need to include this, but she also felt the need to tell us that Persephone went shopping for bracelets, so clearly cutting off the fat from her story is in a strong suit. Lexa asks Persephone what she's going to write about Hades next, and then she says that she should find out about Hades' love life. Persephone scoffs over the idea and says that she works for a serious newspaper, not some tabloid trash. Persephone then goes on to say that she is going to write something that's going to change the world, but Lexa scoffs and asks how bashing Hades is going to change the world. She has a good point, but the bar for being smarter than Persephone is literally buried under the ground at this point. When they get to the club, their narration has to screech to another halt to describe what Persephone is wearing. Persephone is somehow surprised to see Adonis is there despite the fact that she'd guessed Lexa got into the club through Adonis's connections. Like I keep saying, Persephone is not smart. At all. Persephone doesn't want to be with Adonis, and quite frankly, I don't blame her, but she also doesn't want to leave Alexa alone with him. Why Persephone doesn't tell Alexa about Adonis's poor behavior is beyond me, but okay. They go inside where Adonis puts his hands all over Alexa. This makes Persephone wonder why it is that her friend seems to lose her mind whenever a hot guy is around. Sybil, Aru, and Xerxes show up. And, you know, considering that this is supposed to be a night about Persephone, this honestly seems like it's 100% about Donis, because those aren't Persephone's friends, and it's not a place that she would have wanted to go. Remember back in Chapter 1 when she said that her idea of celebrating is drinking coffee at her favorite cafe? But considering that not even five minutes after Lexa met Adonis, she said that he was so hot that she wanted to have his babies, Lexa feeling to read Persephone honestly checks out. However, as soon as the three of them show up, Sobel is quick to call Adonis out on his own nonsense, saying that it's obvious that he has a favor of a god to get the VIP treatment and not one, but two god-owned clubs. But this quickly creates a toxic atmosphere, so Persephone pulls Lexa away to the dance floor. There, they talk about what just happened and who the god might be. A waitress comes over and says that these drinks are on the house. They drink and begin to dance, but after a while, Persephone realizes that when she stops moving, the room is still spinning, and what's worse is that she can't find Lexa. She goes upstairs, but moving is difficult, and the stairs are even worse. She finds Sybil and tries to ask about Lexa. And I'm going to stop right now and say that I've seen enough Law & Order SVU to begin to guess what happened. Adana shows up as Persephone is trying to leave. He makes a joke about the article and tells Persephone to let that go. He tries to take her to dance, but Persephone keeps telling him to release her since he's holding on to her. Adonis makes a joke about that, too. Then, because this entire situation wasn't enough like Special Victims Unit, Adonis then tries to force himself onto Persephone. Thankfully, before we got a call, Benson and Ogre pulls Adonis off from Persephone. Hades has come to rescue Persephone. And at this point, I'm not even mad because the guy literally rescued her from a would-be rapist. As they're leaving, all eyes are on them. Hades doesn't even have to say a thing, and Persephone figured it out that nobody will remember anything. He also promises that Lexa will get home safely. Inside the car, Hades tells Persephone that he'd warned her to stay away from Adonis, but Persephone is just angry that he's still bossing her around, despite what almost happened. I'm not yours, and I'm not your darling. We've been through this, haven't we? You are mine. I think you know that just as well as I do. Any respect ahead for Hades for coming to rescue her just vanished. This is borderline Christian Grey using illegal technology to track Anna's phone. Level of creepy. Persephone then gets onto his lap and kisses him. And despite the state that she's obviously in, Hades just kind of goes along with everything. It doesn't help that the narration itself reminds the reader that Persephone is drunk, but then she falls asleep, or passes out is more like it, and the chapter ends. Chapter 14. When Persephone woke, she was aware of two things. One, she was in a stranger's bed, and two, she was naked. She sat up holding black sheets to her chest. She was in Hades' room. Okay, so I just wanted to highlight this. The girl goes out to a party, gets stupid drunk, almost gets sexually assaulted, but is rescued by the actual love interest who showed up from nowhere at the last second. She then wakes up in the love interest's bed. This is literally the opening of Fifty Shades of Grey. I cannot anymore. No, Lady Persephone, trust me, when we f you'll remember. 
This is literally a line from Fifty Shades. What the hell is happening? Following this, the book remembers that this isn't Fifty Shades. Hades tells Persephone that she was drugged and she remembers getting those free drinks at the club. Hades tells her that her god powers means that she burned through the poison quickly. And okay, so the reason why he didn't go to the police with two drugged girls is because... No, really, I want to know. There's some sicko out there drugging girls for reasons that I think that even Persephone can understand. And Hades is just going to walk away from it. He's not even going to take Persephone or Alexa to the hospital. Hades goes on to say that Adonis is alive, but it was only because he was in the territory of his goddess Aphrodite. Persephone then gets upset that Hades knew about this, but didn't think to tell her. Is that why you warned me to stay away from him? I assure you there are more reasons to stay away from that mortal than the favor Aphrodite has bestowed upon him. Like what? You cannot expect me to understand if you don't explain anything. Persephone has a point here. You can't just tell somebody to stay away from another person and expect for them to just take your word that they're a bad person. And it's usually Persephone who is as dumb as soup, but now it's Hades who continues to miss the point. He says that he fully expected for Persephone to just accept what he said at face value and not question him whatsoever. Persephone tries to apologize, but Hades at least has the common sense to inform her that the fault lies with Adonis. He then brings up the article because it's been too long and we need to talk about it. Persephone tells him that she was asked to write more articles about him and he tries to tell her not to do that. But then she tries to blackmail him, saying that she'll only agree to stop if he removes the contract. If you make me your prisoner, I will spend the rest of my life hating you. So the thing that usually makes the Hades Persephone retellings work for modern audiences is the romance between them. This isn't romantic, this is creepy. They're both really terrible people who keep doing terrible things to one another. Hades then kisses her, and I'd like to highlight something that I mentioned earlier. Persephone woke up naked, so this is uh, steamy to say the least. However, it's steamy in a bad way because of the argument that they just had. But at least Hades has a sense to leave before things get too out of hand. Persephone finds her clothes, redresses, and goes to check on her garden. As she's going, she muses upon her lack of powers. However, upon getting to the spot, she's disappointed that there isn't even a single little sprout popping up. She goes to find Hecate and finds the other goddess in her house in the underworld. There, Persephone unloads on the other woman about everything and the impossible task Hades asks her to do. Hecate asks to see Persephone's powers, so Persephone kills all of the grass nearby. Despite the fact that not even two pages earlier, Persephone reminded the reader that all of the plans in the underworld are nothing but an illusion created by Hades. Hecate says that Hades isn't set impossible tasks only to just help people understand their true powers, but then she says this, Gardening is not the only way to create life. Persephone looked at the goddess, how else well should I create life? You could have a baby. Considering how this chapter started, I think it goes without saying, but ew. Also, I don't know why anybody thinks that Persephone is mature enough to take care of a baby. She barely seems capable of taking care of herself. Hecate goes on to say that the father would need to be Hades or else he would be angry. Persephone is understandably upset. She herself admits that she's not mature enough to be a mother and forget about fathering a child with Hades. Hecate goes on to say that the underworld is a kind of a new beginning for a lot of souls. Some of them had terrible lives and only down here can they truly have a good, well, not life, but you know what I mean. But Hecate uses that to prod Persephone into the right direction over how she can get out of the contract. That Persephone challenged Hades to help mortals and in a way he's asking her to help the dead. Thanks for listening to my book snark on YouTube. New videos are up every Monday, but stick around because I sometimes drop random videos on other days too. Just as a reminder, even if you can't financially support me, there are other ways to support me. The first is watching this video as well as all my other videos. It's also important to like and subscribe. Finally, you can share this video with all of your friends so that they can help as well. If you're already caught up with all of my videos, you can go to Tumblr for my main book snarks, always free and updated every morning. And if you've already read all of my main snarks, you can find even more snark on my Patreon. You can access it for $1 a month, plus you also get early access to my main Tumblr snark. Special thanks to Dawn, Phoebe, and Nikki for supporting me on Patreon already. If you want to hear your name in my video next week, either support me on Patreon or make a one-time donation. Do you like my snark so much that you want me to snark your writing? I do that too! 
For just $3 per chapter, I will tell you how awful that your writing is. But not to worry if you feel like you couldn't take the criticism. I also offer regular book editing as well. $3 for every 5,000 words. You can contact me on any of my social media platforms if you have further questions. If you want to read some of the things that I've written, you can purchase my works on Amazon. I have a slew of erotic short stories and now two full-length novels. I also sometimes run flash sales on my stories, and if you don't follow me on any social media, you might want to do so just so you can know when I might be offering more things for free. Links for everything will be posted below. See you next week, guys!